Howdy. You know, at first I thought a SpongeBob Games top list would be easy. How many could there be? I was wrong. This started as a top 3 list and could have easily been turned into a top 30 list. Because there is a whole unknown universe of SpongeBob games I didn't even know about. Ah, sandy cheeks. Looking at her makes me smile. So I've filed it down to what I consider captures the atmosphere of Bikini Bottom best, or simply has really good gameplay. Or were careless, awkward, second-rate, lazy sellout games trying to capitalize on a young audience. So, with the upcoming release of Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated, let's check out the top five best and worst SpongeBob games. Also, I've skipped over some of the, uh, really old Spongebob games. Because the graphics and sounds are so inferior by comparison to the new ones that I don't think I could review them in a balanced way. Anyway, on to the countdown. For the fifth worst... Plankton's Robotic Revenge. You'd think the graphics would get better in the PS4 era. But even though the introduction cinematic looks beautiful, don't be fooled. Because we've gone from the relatively decent graphics of the Truth or Square game to this. You will see sights so heinous, so terrible, so utterly unpleasant, your eyeballs will tremble just wondering what it is. This somehow looks worse than a game 12 years older than it, Battle for Bikini Bottom, which still retains far more of a sense of unique style even today. Plankton's Robotic Revenge. Ah, <sighs> you know we're in for a pretty lousy game when the production company thinks we're too stupid to know the title of the game. We start the game with, shock and behold, Plankton trying to get the Krabby Patty formula. Except this time, some batteries fell into the ocean, and Plankton uses them to make a giant robot. So SpongeBob and his friends run into a magical portal and boom, away we go. This story feels so much less imaginative than previous games, with not a single twist along the way that surprised me or put me on my toes. This is technically a four-player co-op, but good luck swindling anyone into playing it with you, because this is a mind-numbingly repetitive beat-em-up all the way through. And there's plenty of chances for quips back to the series to liven up the game here. But there was no effort here to liven up this endless droning of button mashing. The main plus to this game is it does have the original entire voice cast. In fact, they interviewed them for the trailers of the game. And what I find interesting here is even they can't hide the fact that they found making the game tedious. Like, they look as exasperated as the critics were that this game exists at all. I don't know what purpose Plankton's life would have if he ever did achieve that goal. It's kind of like a dog chasing a car. You know, you look at a dog chasing a car and you go, if the dog catches a car, what's he gonna do with it? The weapons are your typical bikini bottom affair. Pickle blasters work like assault rifles, except they're kind of more kid-friendly. I don't know, given the way it's tearing up the robots, I don't know if I want to be hit by a pickle at that velocity. You can pretty easily win this just by holding down the shoot button through the whole level, blasting down the same six to seven bland robot enemies. In fact, we fight the same robot plankton boss four different times. And just progressing through the levels to get to them is slow and tedious and annoying. Plankton's Robotic Revenge is just a simple, short, and uninteresting beat-em-up stocking film. And for the fifth best... SpongeBob Squigglepants. Jeebus, there is a sense of style to this one like I've never seen in anything SpongeBob. There is a real appreciation of different art styles and art forms here, all expressed through the Bikini Bottom world. And the gameplay is so smooth and there's a beat to it, and it just clicks in these rapid fire nano games. I could give this one a pass just on its visual aesthetic alone, but let's look at the gameplay too. I know what you're thinking, WarioWare, and you'd be right. Luckily, I loved WarioWare. The sheer novelty of having all these nano games shot at me in rapid fire was always a thrill to play. So this very polished SpongeBob version of WarioWare was a ton of fun for me. And on the side, we have Patchy the Pirate, starring in this sort of Steve from Blue's Clues role, introducing us to the different games and pictures in his usual patchy style. This here be me collection of priceless SpongeBob artwork. <laughs> What's that? 
Ooh, you're wanting to know why the paintings are hidden. But what's interesting here is Tom Kenny gives this sort of off the cuff, almost improv performance. It's a bit more awkward at times, but you know, that's kind of Patchy's thing, being awkward and weird. Give her a shake, <laughs> it feels good. <laughs> it's called an art game, and I'd call this the most creative WarioWare clone I've ever seen. I just appreciate the crazy imaginative setups here for how the various tiny things in Bikini Bottom happen. The big minus and why you may never have heard of this game before? It requires a U-Draw, and it's a clunky add-on that should not be required for kids and adults to enjoy this game. As a result, it's a fantastic game that's faded into obscurity, and that's a real shame. Squawk! No, oh, all right, it'll make you happy. Now get out of here, and don't come back until you have a super duper paintbrush with starboard attachments! <laughs> now, where were we? And for the fourth worst, Atlantis Square Pantis The Game. Well, it is better than the special, sort of. You'd think it'd start off well, because we've dropped into an ice cream filling tank when we start the game. How do you botch up an ice cream firing tank anyway? Well, by getting drab watered down graphics, bland level design, and boring goals such as shoot the targets to shoot more tanks. You have to help us avoid the hazards and pitfalls so we can finish the tour. As soon as you see a hazard on screen, you can go for it. Don't wait around, do it as fast as you can. The game's only a few hours long, which in this case felt like a blessing in disguise. Because even three hours drag in this thing, the story pretty much follows the beats of the episode it was named after. Just like the special, SpongeBob and Patrick find the missing piece of amulet in the cave. Then the crew take the amulet piece to the museum, which opens up the portal to Atlantis. It's basically the same, except in tedious game form. I felt like they could make this better if they made some of these smaller gameplay parts into just short bursts of, say, 5 to 30 seconds, like in WarioWare. In short bursts, I don't think the mazes, the tank, or the quicktimer events are that bad. But instead, each one stretches out for eons, stretching into cruel proportions. I should point out, though, that I did appreciate some of the extra content of this one. Like, you can unlock a commentary of SpongeBob while you're playing, and it's actually pretty fun to play along with. How do I get an artistic license? It's like even the game creators knew they had to liven up the gameplay from dragging a bit. I didn't have that much else to say about Atlanta Square Panis. It's a collection of mini games that drag and really annoying button combination games. Dispose of this quickly. And for the fourth best. SpongeBob SquarePants. Lights, camera, pants. Now this I like a lot more. Like, what setting is more perfect for SpongeBob than the crew playing some Mario Party style minigames together? We're always getting a new level or style. The voices chime in at just the right times and it feels very fresh. Obviously, the cutscenes are looking a bit dated, but hey, it's from the 2000s, so no surprise there. Howdy, y'all! Welcome to my hoot nanny! A nice bonus is this one actually came from the THQ branch in my home country, Australia. And it's always nice to see some creative talent coming from down under. Shame they later went bankrupt. Anyway, as you could probably guess, this is paying homage to the Mario Party games. Except they've cut out the sometimes tedious board game mechanic, which I think works well in this case. And the mini games are good, they're not just tacky add-ons. The games are engaging, creative, and they really let the SpongeBob character shine through. Probably my favorite was the burger flipping challenge, as it feels surprisingly cathartic to be helping the entire SpongeBob team at the Krusty Krab flipping burgers. Particularly after so many years of watching SpongeBob do it alone. Ride em, cow squirrel. I think this is actually among the best homages to Mario Party that I've ever seen. A quick but pleasant SpongeBob Party experience that feels well within the spirit of the show. And for the third worst SpongeBob game. Operation Krabby Patty. This one feels fundamentally broken. At first we get a compilation of some of the 3D cutscenes in the game, then... Ah, here oh. we are at the beginning. I hate loud decibels. Did these game makers never edit a piece of audio in their life? Nothing annoys your audience more than throwing your next scene suddenly 50 
15 decibels up and deafening your headphone users. Anyway, the humour in this one is overall pretty weak, feeling much more like the writing of a lousy season 6 episode. My college educated plan is going exactly as it planned. You know, Mrs. Puff suffering, Spongebob being as stupid as Patrick. Things I personally haven't missed from mid-season. The story this time is, Plankton is, yep, you guessed it, trying to steal the Krabby Patty formula. And this time he's deploying a robot crabs using a bunch of ants to assist him. Well, props for creativity. So we play as robot crabs, collecting the Krabby Patty recipe. Unfortunately, it feels pretty tedious because the ants meant to help you are running away from you constantly. SpongeBob then decides he has to specifically get his license in order to catch the robot crabs. That's it! I'll go get my license! Couldn't you just chase after him? He's going out the door. But anyway, the gameplay feels pretty buggy and broken, but I was glad to be able to participate on my computer. And it's very easy to get stuck on edges while trying to boat drive, which is probably a realistic representation of when SpongeBob tries to drive, but it's not very fun gameplay. Besides, Steven Hilberg asked that SpongeBob never get his license. That was one of his golden rules. But SpongeBob gets his learner's permit before going to hang out with Patrick. Not chasing the robot, which is probably like 10 miles away by now. But then he loses his license immediately in a clam making that entire buggy level a completely pointless waste of time. Why did he not just run after robot crabs in the first place? The top-down fetch gameplay is pretty much repeated throughout the entire game. Though on the plus side, most of the levels are only a few minutes long, which did keep the story moving and stop the levels dragging. The other plus is the music feels very on point, capturing much of that trademark tropical vibe in the beats. If many of the gameplay moments didn't feel so broken, I'd probably give it a pass. Overall, Operation Krabby Patty had some pluses compared to the other worse, but I don't think I'll be playing it again. And the third best SpongeBob game is... SpongeBob, Employee of the Month. Like Operation Krabby Patty, this one's a PC game. Except this time we get a nice, leisurely paced point and click adventure, which feels like such an odd, rare combination for SpongeBob. Yet it felt surprisingly suitable once I was playing. It's refreshingly different among these SpongeBob games. It's like Broken Sword or Space Quest IV, except SpongeBob. But anyway, what matters here most is we've got to talk about SpongeBob's locker. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? SpongeBob keeps a pinup of Sandy in a bikini in his locker. Ah, Sandy cheeks. Looking at her makes me smile. Now, if that isn't proof that Spongy has a thing for Sandy, I'll eat my hat. A few moments later. Aw, oh, he keeps a picture of Squidward, too. And he holds on to that rotten Krabby Patty that caused him to hallucinate. Why? In the dialogue, there's a really good chunk of that early season Spongebob wit, and the original voice actors return with what I consider as one of their best performances in the Spongebob games. I know I am, but what are you? Hey Patrick! Spongebob? Patrick! Spongebob? Patrick! Spongebob! I'm behind you, Patrick. It feels very in character, almost like I'm watching an episode. And it had a few of those quick quips that made me chuckle. What a big voluptuous eye you have! All the better to roll at you, Pip Squeak. I never thought I'd hear SpongeBob use the word voluptuous, but I love it. The creators of this game obviously really did their research on the show. It feels like we're just doing a normal episode of SpongeBob, except we're playing as SpongeBob. And that's the way a SpongeBob game should feel. There's plenty of throwbacks and a ton of minor characters that we'd expect in Bikini Bottom. Do you think I could borrow them? No way, I love that shovel and that pail. I'm getting all teary, I just thinking about them. When I went through SpongeBob's adventure, I legitimately felt like I was in Bikini Bottom, just interacting with SpongeBob's friends. SpongeBob Employee of the Month felt like a pleasant interactive SpongeBob experience at a very leisurely pace. It's not constantly thrilling and action-packed, but it's not trying to be. To me, it was a very pleasant experience. And the second worst SpongeBob game is... Revenge of the Flying Dutchman. The story here? That devious Flying Dutchman turns every one of SpongeBob's friends into his ghostly crew. 
It's one of those kind of tacky Scooby-Doo hypnosis plots, and it feels really out of place in SpongeBob's world. And that's one of the biggest problems with this game. So much of it fails to capture that charm and essence of SpongeBob that even Operation Krabby Patty managed to capture more. The gameplay itself is basically a long 3D array of simplistic fetch quests to face off against the Dutchman. Spongy's mini quests range from delivering food to obscure addresses. This delivery is to a single location. 17 Seashell Street. To finding icons lazily hidden in the dull environments. And on the subject of environments, the seven levels are a selection of what we'd expect in SpongeBob. We've got Bikini Bottom, Downtown, Sandy's Tree Dome, Jellyfish Fields and such. But the problem is, is that many of these locations feel like they were made by people that never actually watched the show. Downtown, for example, is filled with dark alleys, big thug enemies, and construction sites. And it all creates an atmosphere that feels completely out of place in SpongeBob. And aside from the key characters, no recognizable characters from the show actually appear. One of the biggest complaints is SpongeBob gets eight different costumes, which is the only way to change the actual music in the game. And since the jellyfishing costume is the only costume worth using, for hours and hours you will be hearing the jellyfishing song. I mean, don't get me wrong, it was a nice little ditty for the first 10 minutes, then it just kept going. Although Revenge of the Flying Dutchman's gameplay looks passable enough, in reality, the controls are clunky and floaty. This makes some of the jump puzzles and the narrow path walking a frustrating chore. Combine this with seemingly endless loading screens every minute or so, and it made for a surprisingly irritating gameplay experience. With underwhelming environments, an out-of-character, cheap-feeling story, clunky controls and endlessly repeating music, I personally would not call this an enjoyable SpongeBob game. And I think the second best SpongeBob game is... The SpongeBob SquarePants movie game. Now this is more like it. This follows the movie to a T, and I genuinely wanted to see how they'd remake the movie scenes. For those who don't know the movie's story, basically, SpongeBob gets depressed for not being promoted to manager, then proceeds to get drunk on ice cream with Patrick. Then King Neptune holds Krabs hostage, until SpongeBob can retrieve Neptune's crown, giving us plenty of levels of fun for SpongeBob and Patrick's escapade into manliness. In fact, we get an expansive 18 3D levels this time, all with a lot of variety in location, and it feels much more substantial than some of the previous games on the list. And there's plenty of collectibles to find, and bonuses, and abilities to upgrade too. And that really helps give a sense of progression, and keeps the gameplay flowing well. And I think the difficulty curve is just right here. Most SpongeBob games kind of have a reputation for being too easy, but none of the platforming or sliding levels feel too easy, but not too difficult either. There's also some nice twists added into the gameplay by using the uh, goofy goober tokens, like the SpongeBob Arena, the floating block challenges, or the combat arena. There's even some time trials for the racing and sliding levels, and the collectibles really do add to the gameplay, like the manliness points and treasure chests. While Krabby Patty are used to recover health, manliness points upgrade your abilities, like maximum health and attack power. In this case, SpongeBob gives us the karate spin attack, but he can also get the sponge ball and the sonic wave guitar, and they get more powerful as you upgrade. Moving around SpongeBob feels smooth, and the attacks feel satisfying. Plus, unlike Plankton's Revenge, there is a wide variety of enemies here. It's a game that feels novel, and with the constantly changing setting, it feels very fresh to me too. There's also a good amount of well-timed quotes. Nah. Now I am the master. Upsy daisy! The eternal descender! Is the room spinning or is it just me? The voice actors are as on point as ever, and they chime in at just the right time. But most importantly, I feel it once again captures the atmosphere of the Bikini Bottom universe. While I personally don't like the backgrounds and colors quite as much as Battle for Bikini Bottom, the graphical style on the characters never feels too uncanny and feels just right. There's a few bugs here and there, but SpongeBob the movie game is a mostly engrossing 3D platformer. And unlike a lot of SpongeBob games, it actually offers a challenge. I'd actually call this one of the best movie tie-in games I've ever played. And before we get to number one, let's go through some quick honorable mentions. SpongeBob SquarePants, Creature from the Krusty Krab. 
It'd be a crime not to mention this one. This one has its fans, and I can definitely see why. It's a very imaginative setup, with us basically exploring the trippy dreams and nightmares of SpongeBob, Patrick, and Plankton. This is probably the weirdest SpongeBob game ever produced, though at times, it's also the ugliest. But there was obviously a lot of creative effort here, and I like that they tried to make it so off the wall. For example, at one point Patrick dreams he's a superhero, and the town becomes this paper-thin, ink-dotted world. Or SpongeBob gets a major graphical overhaul in racing, looking kind of hard-boiled. Like, where else would we see hard-boiled SpongeBob? It all sounds good in theory, but when you look at it, it's pretty harsh on the eyes. Overall, this one's okay. SpongeBob vs. The Big One – Beach Party Cook-Off Well, it's basically helping SpongeBob in the kitchen on DS. But more interesting than my comments on this would be the comments of the younger generation. And here they are. According to Common Sense Media, children stated, We love it. I laughed. I very happy. They love me very much. And for you to see the Yes, indeed. I can say these reviews were very insightful. SpongeBob's Truth or Square. Well, despite its unfortunate title, I like this one. I feel it captures the SpongeBob world very succinctly in its music, sound effects, and in the characters' voice quips. And fortunately, it has nothing to do with the clip show of the SpongeBob special with the same name. So basically, the story is SpongeBob forgot where he put the formula. Somehow. So to remember, he apparently has to get as happy as possible. Sure, why not? So we travel through SpongeBob's memories trying to get him happier in order for him to remember where he put the Krabby Patty formula. I know, it makes even less sense than usual, but it's a good game. This basically gives the game an excuse to send us through different episodes of the show in game form. So I guess it kind of is a SpongeBob clip show in game form, but that's actually kind of cool. There's very clear ties between the show's episode and the level, and it's nice to be able to recognize them. The minus is, I found the levels can be a lot more linear than, say, the SpongeBob movie game or Battle for Bikini Bottom, but it was still a pleasant enough SpongeBob experience. Anyway, on to the number ones. And I think the number one worst SpongeBob game is SpongeBob Hero Pants. Now I know what you're thinking. But Josh, that CGI looks pretty good for a SpongeBob game. Yes, you're right, but this is just the introduction CGI that's meant to mislead the audience. If you look at the actual gameplay, it's not so crash hot. But that's not even the problem here, it gets so much worse. For the story, the game can barely figure out the story for itself. As long as it lets SpongeBob get in the superhero suit for the trailer footage. But basically, SpongeBob and his friends find the Krusty Krab filled with robots. That, and walking spatulas, and they're all causing havoc. Followed immediately by... Bubbles the Talking Dolphin! He says someone's using a magic book to make even weirder things happen. He magically turns them into their superhero forms and tells them to find the lost pages of the magic book in order to... stop weird things from happening? I don't know, it was clear the writing team didn't give two crapsicles for this one, so let's just move on to the gameplay. It's a game that's basically built on clickbait principles. Its opening cinematic makes it look glorious on the surface, but all that is within is an effortless, weak disappointment. The gameplay is basically an even more broken repeat of Plankton's robotic revenge. That's it! At least, maybe the graphics are slightly better? No, wait, they don't even bother to animate their faces moving in-game. SpongeBob's just constantly giving me that dead-eyed stare. And prepare for constant choppiness and lagging graphics. Even when there's nothing on screen. Why are you lagging? There is three coins on screen. You didn't even bother to animate the faces, so where's the effort going? Is the game just struggling to live with its own existence? For those who are not in the know, shovelware is a term used for games that serve no other purpose than to make a quick buck. That is all this is. This game is so not worth the $30 out of your wallet. In fact, it's not even worth playing if someone paid you 30 bucks to play it. I offered to pay the homeless guy down the street to play it with me, but Barlog says he'd rather have another night without shower or sheltering than play this game. So I bought him a subway and we chatted about welfare and equality. Anyway. As for the soundtrack, it's inoffensive enough, but that's because they took it directly from Legend of Bikini Bottom. A far superior game! And all hearing it in Hero Pants does is make me wish I was playing that game instead. 
There's no bikini bottom atmosphere here. They're just trying to pander to the younger generation with a bunch of Spongebob poses. Like Plankton's Robotic Revenge, the gameplay is dull, recycled, and just repeats itself for three hours. And we get not four, but one boss fight in the game. And to top it off, that one boss fight is a recycling of the robot in Plankton's Robotic Revenge. Ugh. Once again, it's a four-player co-op, but once again, who would play this with you? And why would you put your friends through that suffering? I guess misery loves company, but I don't know, go take a walk together. It doesn't make a kid think, it doesn't make them smile, and I suspect it'd barely hold their attention for even the briefest moment. In fact, I'm once again going to quote a younger person's comments on this game. This Spongebob game is so easy and quick I can beat it in like two hours and the game is soy easy. Even four year olds can beat it. Just don't buy it if you have an Xbox PS2 GBA. <sighs> or gameplay just buy F Spongebob Battle for Bikini Bottom instead of this game. You heard them. Go buy that game. And speaking of which... And I think the number one best Spongebob game is... SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom. I know it's an obvious choice, but they just haven't topped this one yet. Now this, this is a SpongeBob game. I don't think the SpongeBob games have ever had more detail, time, and effort put into them than this. Which is possibly why, as of making this video, the remake is on its way. It's been a cult classic for over a decade, and for good reason. One of the things I like is there's a very simple personal core objective here to start with. Just find the golden spatulas. That's it. Shing. Sparkle, sparkle. Wow! A golden spatula! And it's a great excuse to explore the now artistic, detailed, and imaginative world of Bikini Bottom. This is just an interactive Bikini Bottom world. It's what we've been looking for here. From the moment you start the game, it just drips Spongebob atmosphere. From the sound effects, to the colors, to the simply graphic but detailed houses, to the towns and the beaches, and the dialogue. I could barely go two to three lines without smirking in these exchanges. You do that! Don't worry, Squidward! I'll bring back that King Jellyfish jelly for you to rub all over yourself! Making a tutorial sequence this vibrant and colorful really is amazing. And this time, it actually feels like the voice actors are having some fun with it. I make myself a snack, but there's no time! The ten levels take you to many of Bikini Bottom's hotspots, and the tongue-in-cheek charm and references back to the show are constantly there in spades. And from the very beginning, it gives me something I really enjoy doing in the SpongeBob world. Simply exploring the jellyfish fields, or running around Bikini Bottom talking to its residents. And this time, it feels much more like an open world. You go your own way, there's plenty of routes and nooks and crannies to explore. This is Bikini Bottom as I imagine it, with all its odd beaches and weird weird sky shapes, and the atmosphere is further accentuated by mostly pleasant poppy sound effects, and it gives that nice cartoony edge to the gameplay. And it's very polished gameplay to begin with. The platforming and puzzles are smooth as glass, but still not too easy to play through. SpongeBob acts exactly like you'd expect. He spins, he tongue boards, and he bungee jumps down skyscrapers in his underwear. Patrick throws crates and Sandy lasso copters everywhere with her usual karate agility. I mean, obviously, the graphics are a bit dated at this point, as it's from 2003. But frankly, they still look very clear and sharp to me. This is the sort of color style I would expect from SpongeBob. These graphics immerse me more than enough in the Bikini Bottom world. It's not about a HD sheen, it's about getting the style of SpongeBob right. The stage music is fantastic too. It's iconic, upbeat, and it doesn't feel too intrusive either. In fact, the team liked it so much that they have been reusing this SpongeBob music in games 15 years later. My only big nitpick? It's painfully obvious that they couldn't get Mr. Krabs or Mermaid Man's original voices in this, and it's jarring to hear someone else imitating them. Are they here to fix the TV? Uh, are you sure he can't fix the TV? Oh, I let you go, Squirt. On a flying saucer! The Krusty Krab's been overrun by a bunch of them hootlum robots of yours. And that occasionally broke the immersion for me. But all the other key characters seem to be in their original roles, and I'm hoping they'll fix those voices up in the remake. But aside from that nitpick, 
this is essentially the Mario 64 of SpongeBob. It's vibrant to explore, it's thrilling to play, it's revolutionary for SpongeBob games, and until its remake, I can't see them topping this amount of detail and effort put into every level and scene. When the remake comes, there might be a new contender, but until then, I personally consider this the absolute best SpongeBob game. But you know, probably the biggest novelty I got from the Spongebob games is instead of watching Spongebob from afar, in the good games, I really did feel like I was joining in on Spongebob's daily activities. And that was a very novel experience for me. And if you think I missed a particular Spongebob game, feel free to leave your own thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.